Hello and welcome back to Joe Skaskaska. Fully Cooly. <laughs> <laughs> I hate that. I told you I'm going to make a different genre. I wish that my facial expression was recorded. <laughs> I didn't tell you what it was. I thought you had something. Joe Skaskaska. I guess that's I'm, what we're fucking doing. I'm Sam. I, I'm Jim, well, by the way. Well, I said I was going to do it. And you didn't like the last one, so I was going to give you a different music pun with every episode. All right. This is my bit for this show. So what show, what do we do on I Joe Scott, Scott, Scott? I did say Fully Cooly Edition, so welcome back to our Fully Cooly uh, discussion podcast. I have seen the first season, Jim has not. We will be going through all the seasons. Eventually. Eventually, but... So currently we're only talking about episodes three and four of the OG, mm-hmm. original classic edition, the Crystal Pepsi, if Crystal you will. Crystal Pepsi edition, yes. Of Fully Cooley. So yes. do episode... you remember what the... So they're, the Marquis de Carabas That's is the first one, or episode three, and then episode four was the baseball one. Full what was swing. It called? Full swing. He he did it. He hit the bat. He, he hit... did the swing. So I guess... So we had talked a little bit about some of the... the he's a director last episode. I, I just want to talk about at least the uh, localization stuff I have some, some information about. So the director and script handler for localization, Mark Handler, stated that the localization of the script was the hardest part of the show. The in-jokes in the show include obscure pop culture references that had to be decoded and transferred to English audiences. Because apparently there's a reference to Cheerios. It did continue soft drink in Japan. So for the English release, it was Crystal Pepsi instead of whatever the local Japanese can- canceled brand was. Yeah. As you guys could tell. You can Yeah, you can tell because it's clearly not like Pepsi branded. Yeah. But that's crazy that like you could do that. Like because it's a it's like not Pepsi. And it's not like a one-off gag either. Like it's like a thing. It's like a recurring element. So, director Kazuya uh, Surumaki responded to criticism of Fully Cooley saying comprehension should not be an important factor in Fully Cooley. That's interesting. So, I do have there's some other I can save the other stuff for next episode because I have one about like the the breaking the rules or the, uh, about the more about the soundtrack of it and then I have one about the actual like the large iron building which I'll probably say the last episode. <clears throat> yeah, that feels like it's going to be like some kind of reveal. Yeah. So, yeah, this episode so le- episode 2 came out in uh what's it called? June of 20 uh, episode, 2000. Uh, episode we're on episode 3. I don't know, but episode 3 came out in August so I'm just giving the the, the time scale. Oh, okay, so it's it- like every other month basically. Yeah. So, and yeah, so we have Marquis de Carabas, which is, I think, this is probably your favorite one out of the... the... This is by far my favorite episode. So I'm not going to lie. I was a little lukewarm on the first two episodes. Like, there were things that I really liked. But episode three, I was like, oh, I understand why people like Fully Cooley. Like yeah, This is the episode I think I've seen the most out of all, like, the reruns I've watched on Adult Swim growing up. Where and episode four was, like, the one I saw the least of for the most part. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I still am trying to learn the characters' names. So we, yeah, we we meet, well, uh, we meet Mata's classmate. We've seen her like a little bit. What's her name? Ni- her name is Eri Nina Mori. Oh, it is Nina Mori. Okay, but we met, we saw her a little bit, but yeah, she wears her USSR shirt. But yeah, her father's the mayor of Mabase. Which I think we never talked about the, the name of the city that they live in. No, what's it called? Mabase. Yeah, M A B A S E. Is this like a reference? Probably not. <laughs> this is like obviously. I okay, mean, that's just. I mean, it probably thing. is a it's reference, just... but like this is obviously a fictional city. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, so we basically learned that uh, her father is the mayor. And he's under a scandal. We never see. We never see. We him. actually never see, see the him. Mayor. His mother or her father. Yeah. We yeah. So... We, yeah the scandal is like such a not element at all. It's yeah. almost like the, the the details of the scandal are not as important as like the fact that a scandal is happening. Yeah, and that she is like, what's it called? Her. Her father's going through a scandal. He could be prosecuted for something, and her mother might be divorcing her father. So it's, she's kind of going through like it. Certainly seems like he's he's having an affair. Yes, because we meet the secretary that's driving her to school, and yes. she stayed overnight and everything, and she had to change of clothes. And... Knowing if that's related or not, maybe it, 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 maybe I, I could see that being see, related to the divorce. And cheating can be is also probably a way bigger taboo. Also in Japan, like it's probably a way a huge ass taboo in Japan. It's, it's a pretty big taboo he, I mean that was like a career it's, it's, ending it's, that was a, I mean it's a proper scandal when it happens in America yeah. as well but it's more of a was more of a of a uh, of a publicity scandal of like yeah. everybody has something to talk about where Japan is probably like yo that's fucked up like get the fuck out who knows who knows <laughs> but yeah it's, but she's she's obviously just like saying who cares what happens like she's she, very disconnected it's she's like or, kind of a foil to uh Naoto. Naoto, in a in a way, like because where 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 you know people would re- if his reaction, she always tried to play all. Cause everybody views her as mature for like kind of not caring about like all this stuff and like. Yeah, there's a lot of like like I feel like a fully coolie is like heavy handed metaphor the the anime. Like, yes, everything is like 
very much like a different like growing up metaphor and they just hammer it down your throat but they do it in such a fun way that you don't hate it yeah because uh, like the whole thing that like the one thing that really stands out in this episode it's kind of like the the bookends almost is like the curry so that's a, like this whole idea <laughs> and it comes up in the next episode too of like spicy food being like for adults yeah like basically like oh children can't handle spicy food and also not to go and like i hate sour stuff i hate spicy stuff he, yeah like, he does eventually have he just downs a sour thing at the very end to like try to be i guess look grown up yeah it's like when you're a kid you don't have like taste like you can't handle it yeah but then like when you're an adult like you I, there uh, was it jokes on in, them i can never handle spice so <laughs> i think it's in this episode where they they talk about the idea of like oh but spice is it's like better like you'd like learn to appreciate it the more you eat it like yeah i think that was actually maybe that might have been episode four but whatever but yeah, uh, the, but, so, yeah the, the whole joke about like him not wanting the spicy curry because yeah. well then and the main thing we learned that she, there's a play for puss in boots coming up where she plays the lead with opposite of nauta and yeah he where he he's voted to play put the, the titular puss yeah he's he's the 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 titular gestiefel to Kater, as and he doesn't really he doesn't want to be in the play because plays are for kids and he was, and he basically skips rehearsal because fuck, he's like, fuck that shit. Also, he has a new uh, hat. He's wearing a new hat. Yeah. It's, uh, and she, it's so they, the beginning of the episode, I love it. Like he wakes up uh, and Haruka is like fixing her bike and is being very loud and he's like screaming at her. Uh, and then she like plays with the hat and they don't show like what's on her. Or, like, oh, that's a reveal. We're going to get a reveal. And they actually switches the hat too. He yeah. switches it to uh, like a, uh, what are they called? Bucket hat. Yeah. So yeah, he and that's, so he skips rehearsal and goes to Mamimi. He's there where she like discovers his cat ears and just like pets them. And she like, kind of loves the cat ears a lot. Yeah, it was just it, it's very I like I find it hilarious. I love that. <laughs> it's cute. It's funny because like so later on we we get the thing where Nina Mori is like not like she she's told to not touch the ears because it's bad and we <laughs> see it like, it like spreads to her. It, uh, it doesn't really. Well, we see later. It's not really. It's not really spread. It's more of a transfer. Yeah, it transfers. That's a better way to say it. Yeah. Um, but it doesn't with um. What's her name? Uh, Mimi Ori. No. Mamimi. Mamimi. Uh, <laughs> Mamimi. Yeah, Mamimi. Actually, you'll never. you ever. I'll her never name. remember her name. I'm gonna call her the homeless one. You're going. You're going to what I did and look at so many other things. <laughs> I'll just not at a bit. Just not get the so, name right. So Mamimi. Her name is right. Yes, Mamimi. Mamimi. So if ma- you say Mimi, I won't even get upset. Mamimi, uh, like plays with them and like she's like, "Ha, kitty cat." I was afraid you didn't go for Nanami for like an Utna thing. <laughs> this is stuff. Mamimi. I, I will not forget now. I will not forget <laughs> Mamimi. But so yeah, they have that cute little scene. Uh, I don't like Mamimi very much in this. Mamimi in, the, in this like two episodes takes a huge backseat. Yeah. She's like barely a character in episode Because like, episode two he ends like I don't want to like leave her side, and then the next two episodes he, he kind of leaves her side. He totally leaves her side. And actually, these two episodes like we well, we'll, we'll talk. I guess we'll talk about when, when we actually get to the house scene about that. But yeah, we we, we do see Itty like there like with the uh, the the late the secretary kind of like escaping the press and everything through the sewers and like kind of just like fuck my father fuck fuck this whole thing i'm run- i'm running <laughs> fuck away philip banks fuck, fuck it's not making fresh pits purpose <laughs> but she basically like, just runs away to the train station where nato finds her and just says like you just need to talk to her about everything and about the whole uh more stuff with the play and the eat i mean i think mean, he talks about well, so, her father and everything so this is where like he he's a uh... What's it called? He gets hit by well, yeah. Haruko, well, and then ta- he, the the classic kiss moment. Yeah, but he he hits him, and then basically, I think the the thing mainly transferred from when he ran into her because they hit foreheads, and you kind of see like both their foreheads go red. Yeah. So instead of her touching the ears. Yeah, that makes sense actually. Uh, it does happen like way later though. That's yeah. the thing. It's almost, I, I guess it's like whatever. There's connection made there to, to easily transfer. Mm-hmm. But yeah, he gets he she gets knocked out, and she gets a, like the, the cramps essentially. So yeah, okay. She gets cramps, but then later on, it's like she just has to poop, which I know is like a thing that happens. But I, I'm at first I was like, is this supposed to be like a female puberty thing? Like, is that what they're going for here? But I don't know. I think I guess they kind of. We'll talk. I guess we'll talk about it in the final act of this one. But but she and she also like passes out as well from the cramps as as, as we because they bring her back to to the to his house essentially. They have dinner together where. For every every question they have for her, she always just repeats the the same like basically the line like over the same way every time. Yeah, and she always takes like a spoonful of curry. Yeah. I really like the scene. It's very funny. It's really funny too because like the whole thing of uh, the idea that oh adults can handle spicy food. It's like totally disproven by his family because 
His family is eating, like, it, suffering through his, the spicy His grandfather, curry. like, literally drowning in, like, the curry. <laughs> and there's, like, a lot of the curry looks like shit, too. Like, um, Nauto's is literally, like, a pile of steaming shit on his plate. Uh, also, the little... So, the joke here is that she's supposed to be more mature, but the curry that she's eating very easily actually is, like, the baby curry, like, the no-spice yeah. curry. And she does get her cramps anyway, so it could, you know, you don't know if that's, like, the... Uh, the... But then, that's, like, poop, though. Is is that not supposed... Is that supposed to be, like... Because then they make the reference later, because uh, she, she gets up and, like, she has to poop, and then... Um, what's her face? I love, I do love this scene, um, where they're all sitting at the animation style changes pretty, pretty wildly. Um, and, uh, what's her face is like, all right, you're going to, you have to go, you have to go, uh, poop, go to the bathroom, go that way. But then the next scene is her in like the bathroom. And I thought for sure we were going to get like something coming out. Yeah. I thought we were going to get something. And but... like, so a voice talks to her and hands her that like. Uh, I think it's like supposed to be a. Is, is it is a, a shampoo guard? Well, I guess? as you see it when when the in episode four, that's the same thing he pu- he puts on. Yes. That's his head. It's it's he's, it basically said it'll keep the soap out of your eyes. You're supposed to put it like over your eyes, so when you wash your hair, it soap yeah. goes off of it. Because the weird thing that Japanese people do is that they like it's, don't shower the whole, they don't shower with water on themselves all the time. They like sit down and they they lather up and then they like bathe. Because it really does sound like it's it's. It's now his dad got rid of the secretary. He got rid of all like because as he said, I took. Oh, it's supposed to be the secretary. No, but it's a male. No, 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 voice, no, 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 no. It's in the male's voice says, "I got rid." It, it, basically, they basically say, "I got rid of the secretary." I, I got, okay. rid, I got rid of like that loose end kind of thing, like, and and maybe that's that, that's the whole thing. I thought it was. I'm to be, confused. I thought it was supposed to be now. It sounded like Nato's da, like dad talking. But so yeah, I thought because I like I'd have a description of the episode just just to remind me of everything and like that's not brought up. On here, <laughs> huh. yeah, I'm, I, which that feels like a really important scene, and because like to me it would be like oh like someone's giving her something to like help if she's having like her first period or something, because like Ava does this, like Ava actually has, uh, so later on in, in Ava, Asuka kind of has like a really rough time, like she has like a, a mo- like a mental breakdown essentially, <laughs> and ramping up to that, um, there's like mention of her. There's one episode where they're like mention oh like oh she's on her period like not as like a joke like oh she's crazy but it's like actually something that like they bring up like oh she's doing badly in her like <laughs> ava synchronations blah 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 and they also i don't know they're so i was like oh are they gonna do like are they gonna like make it like text or is it just gonna be this kind of like jokey subtext because <laughs> like i don't know from the standpoint of like the i'm the more like male focused team doing fully coolly i didn't think we would get any like female puberty metaphor but, i really thought we were gonna get mostly just the male yeah, stuff but you get that with her and like her it, it's more. It's strange because it strange. feels like it could be read as like poop. As just, also, oh, she had to poop. It's also a lot of her going through the mental, probably the mental stress of like a potential. You know, your father under a scandal and your, your divorce yeah. looming. It's a lot of, of like, especially with like the the when it eventually ha- like something comes out of her head. It's more so like it's coming out of her head. So it's like kind of stress like building up until it like yeah grows out of control. So definitely, I think the one thing that like I really like about this, I mean, I, I like this character. She's probably my favorite. Yeah. She's best girl. Well, we, yeah. So we get, we get, we go to, but before, before that scene, even it was early in the beginning when she was with the secretary in the car, mm-hmm. um, that she's perceptive and she's like very mature for her age because she's able to like realize that, Oh, my father's sleeping with the secretary. Yeah. But so we kind of have this contrast because we have the scene where the secretary is putting makeup on. She's like putting perfume on. It's very like feminine, very like something an adult woman would do. Whereas she is still like kind of chi- like a child. still. like yeah. she's worried about this play. She's like, like, I don't care what you guys do. I just want to focus on this play is coming up for, yeah. for me. So it's kind of I think it might be kind of like how girls mature men like mature earlier. Like they, they kind of. Get, oh, they like yeah they mature it, mentally earlier that's, that's yeah that's, that's, that's always that's what they usually see, yeah they always go through and say everything and even though like they may, they may act mature but they still have like the stress and exactly like, the changes and everything so like, even though she's like aware of this like more adult world where nauto is not nauto is very much like so he's very confused and just shuts it and, out and she's we, aware of it but she doesn't engage and as in we it. learn she she sees has that like idea of this play my parents will come and they will basically get back together kind of thing as well yeah very idealized yeah yeah which is a very child point of view of this like oh this play is gonna save my like save my parents marriage and get them back together mm-hmm. kind of thing my father won't get arrested like yeah <laughs> yeah but no we have, we have a scene uh with she we not to go back to his room and you know she, Eerie is sitting on his chair in his pajamas she has her glasses on because she wears contacts apparently yes which i love the way she looks with glasses 
I know she's like actually like her design is an like, elementary schooler. Yeah, her but. design is very like well drawn in like this part because yes, she, she basically they basically talk about like she talks about oh I fix the uh, the election kind of thing so you would I would be the lead and you would be the puss in boots so we could sh- you know g- work together and everything and then the, she or, says the line. Oh, then she says line. the it's pretty cool right line she says it she said it <laughs> i didn't know it was her i thought haruko said it i know right um but no yeah so basically she clearly has a crush on naoto yeah because like, she just sits on the bed with him they like, touch hands and he's or he butts his head on her and she has his hand he's like really blushing through it all so i did read the the puss in boots okay um i read the play i think the original play but it was in german and it was Close to eight years ago, so I do forget almost all the details about it. So I guess there's a pivotal kiss. I guess there's a, a part where there's a kiss because that's kind of what, like, doesn't she kiss? She kisses him right in the rehearsal. Like it does that kind of cut to like the final scene where they're in like the classroom. Yeah, it's and because like... he's like sleeping, and then so she she kissed him right. It wasn't Haruko. Interpretation. Because they they kind <laughs> of it, it, I think it is supposed to be kind of vague. Yeah, but I thought it was supposed to be Nina Mori. It felt like it could be that could also could have been a lead up to more stress, essentially. Yeah, because I, I I assume that's what she wanted, right? Yeah, like she, she wanted, wanted that. She, she definitely wanted, wanted to be with Nato, and it was like a mature, like oh yes, a kiss. Like that's a very mature thing to do. Yeah, that's like the. It's funny that these puss in boots because like in in these you think it'd be like Romeo and yes. Juliet, yeah, Romeo and Juliet or, is like or the any classic kind of one. Shakespeare. In like every cartoon when I was a kid, whenever they had like a play kissing scene, it was Even always like, Romeo and Juliet. You can say like Sleeping Beauty or something like that. Or yeah. Snow White. But yeah. So it also interesting because like, Haruka's like on the top bunk essentially. And like, this is like, the first time you kind of see like now that this is it's just super cool with her for the most part. Like, yeah, now, they're, he's like, definitely they're... really comfortable with her now. Yeah. He's accepted it. <laughs> he said that like, being pet on the ears. Like, also, this, the finaling of like his ears part. is like very, you know. It's very like control. It's very funny, but it's also like he, very he, controlling. He doesn't want anybody to touch his ears, but like she gets them like very easily. Even like he turns to goo, like when they, someone grabs his ears. Mm-hmm. And it, it's kind of a, it's like I'm really surprised at how like little small things develop between episodes because like that kind of her manipulation of him becomes like a really big thing in episode four. That's yes. like a lot of the focus and you can kind of see starting here where yeah he is letting his guard down around her he is like letting her touch his ears and like like fondle he let, them. letting him letting her take his brother's bunk yes that too that's a really big thing <laughs> that was like his big thing and she just put all her shit up there too which is funny i think maybe he stopped doing because she did clean the room I, th- I i feel like he he just let her have it because once once he admitted to mamimi that like his brother had american girlfriend he kind of saw how she reacted to that he just kind of said fuck you him that's why he doesn't really want to do oh. baseball. Like, hmm. Yeah. Well, I think I think to me, we'll talk about the baseball one in a minute. But, yeah. Um. I think there's a few different. Like my, I'm, inter- I'm, I've interpreted that's that. That's the a few fun thing ways. about this show. You can interpret it many ways. Yeah. <laughs> it really is like open ended. It's funny because some of the metaphors are super heavy handed, but a lot of like the symbols, I feel like the whole thing with the head, like that head thing. It's I guess it's supposed to be like a. I don't know. Whatever. <laughs> yeah, that, that episode four is de- or episode five is definitely the uh, four. Definitely the weird like interpretation, like the, the symbolic. It feels like that one we- a weird commercial where it's just like, <laughs> what the fuck? The- what the fuck is the message of this fucking thing? Yeah, like the the one with like, the person running and like throwing like the this like with the sledgehammer. Oh, the the, the classic Apple one. Yeah, yeah, like it's, it's like that. Like what the fuck is this like happening? Yeah, but that's you- such a funny commercial. That's but- been like remember and they fucking fork knife. Fortnite, they did a Fortnite parody of it. I don't when remember, I don't remember when the Epic Games lawsuit happened, they did because the whole thing that original commercial was an Apple commercial. Um, it was like break away from Microsoft, break away from being like a, a suit, a and, slave. Yeah, <laughs> and then this new one was in Fortnite in the Fortnite engine, uh, a Fortnite character throwing it at like an a Apple chug TV chug. or something, oh, okay. <laughs> throwing a chuck, and it was supposed to be like Apple is in hindering our ability oh, to, yeah, the whole to charge micro transactions or whatever. <laughs> Forgot. But we live in hell. Basically, next episode or next episode, the next scene cuts to them at the school. Essentially, Haruka, 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 Haruka there, and uh, and the robots there, and like she's giving. Him his, I like, really thought it was like a dream. It, 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 ha- it's everyone's ha- in, so okay. She's in her gym clothes. Some of the girls are just in their gym yes. clothes. 
It felt like maybe, it felt like, or I guess like, cause all of them are dressed, a lot of them are dressed up as characters, and I guess I don't know what the Puss in Boots play is, cause like that she, cause she just has the giant hat, the Puss, like the I don't know what her other character in Puss in Boots is, but she had the giant I think hat. It's the Marquis de Carabas. I think that's the character. Or may, maybe she was just pra- like you know they were practicing in during gym. I guess I don't know, but essentially, <clears throat> it leads to like them arguing about everything where like he doesn't want to do it and she's trying to force him to do it use her kind of be her father like using her position as president to like try to get her way essentially yeah well, it's very and then you know she she kind of like you know shows off his uh, uh what's it called reveals his ear exposes him she does in front of everyone in front of god and anime <laughs> and then but then as his he's like yo fuck you you actually you you <laughs> Fake the election was faked. Stop the count, like. Stop the count. And yeah, and, and then basically that's when like the that ears transfer to her, and we see basically the overflowing kind of thing happen, where you know it got transferred to her, and like we see this like weird spider uh, creature come out of her head. Yeah, really cool. It's it kind of almost looks like a chandelier when yeah. it first formed because it like it like attaches to the, the ceiling e- the ears become like sharp and become like the legs it's really fucking cool it's a really cool design it animates incredibly well yes like this is just the shit you don't see anymore and the top has a weird eye that will come out like a very resident evil eye that just ran- will <laughs> randomly be there i think this is a uh, i'm sure this is all done cell and cell animation it just looks it looks that good but and like she's like and like the cool thing about, about it's like a it is like a spider robot but it also just like uses her to attack yeah, it's and it's only her legs too. Yeah, which is like obviously part of like, spider. Well, I was gonna say it's like obviously her crotch. Like <laughs> I do love the part where she kicks the uh, Conti and then he gets the pa- he grabs her her, her, pa- her shorts come her off. Shorts come off. And he yeah. tries to get it back on. I just, I just love that. That's a really nice. Like I love Conti hasn't gotten much characterization aside from his first episode, but that one is really funny. <laughs> Uh, and I, I, I really just like that little detail. I like the way that the the shorts look when they're scrunched up when he tries to get him back on. Like it just looks great. Like the show looks gorgeous. It's crazy. Yeah, I love all the random like nobody characters in the background too. Like the guy dressed up in the rat costume and she, she's yeah he uses the the one bard like ukulele as an attack on her. Oh yeah, that's really funny. Like, and I also love the design because like it look, looks like her hair like blends into the robot like the bottom of the design. It looks so cool. It's it's really cool. And kind like, of can make cool robots. Yeah, confirm. the fight is awesome, and it's it's really interesting because it it does feel like um I I get like so many Gunbuster <laughs> vibes. Like I really want to watch Gunbuster too. Like after this, just because like it has like the kind of like we can do a bonus Gunbuster and Die Buster. I never watched them. Oh, you never saw? Oh, I meant to, uh, sorry, I meant Die Buster. You never seen Gunbuster? Oh, it's so good. It's like. Great classic mecha. We're like, doing uh the summer of Gynex, <laughs> the spring of spring Gynex, Gynex October, Gynex cleaning. I don't know, Gynex cleaning. Um, no, not even yeah. Gynex because everything after this is not Gynex. It's freshman IG and like and another. I think I forget the other studio. Studio is it Bones? Bone Booness. You know, it's like really two, two studios for... that do the sequel seasons and like oh, for, and, oh. the, and the upcoming seasons. Like freshman IG does a couple, one of them. And I think another studio does another one. Oh yeah, if they came out at the same time, they probably had to like split the production. Maybe. Whatever. Um but no, uh Gunbuster and then technically Die Buster is just called Gunbuster 2, but they gave it a different name in English. Mm-hmm. Uh I know that Die Buster cuz I saw the first episode has that like really cartoony the way the mechs are not like real robot like that sort of like more classic Gundam where like it's a little more realistic. They're they're like more flexible and like they play around with that. Yeah, yeah. Like yeah. It's almost like they care more about the animation looking fun than like anything else. Than, re- than realism or anything. Yeah. But yeah, so the fight happens. Curry drops onto like the the, the top slash mouth, I guess, of, of the robot. <laughs> Perfectly. It like perfect, like a perfect plate of curry. So that was a curry that like, what's her face brought for, uh, Har- Haruko brought it for his lunch, for Naruto's yeah. lunch. And so, you know. And it falls right into its mouth. Uh, it spits, spits out Eerie because uh, I guess it can't, it can't handle it. So this is the thing too. So that's why I think like it's supposed to be like a shit thing rather than like a cramps thing. It because could... when the curry, this it makes the spider like like lose a bunch of ooze and then it, it it's like running and there's like a little fart joke too. And yeah, uh, I, 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 it gotta be poop's funny. Poop is funny. So they, yeah. So yeah, Nato fuses with Conti and they do the cannon again and we can they just beat the evil demon. Not gonna lie kind of disappointed they did it's the very, cannon again it's a very quick fight but uh the, the fight is looks incredible but the fact that it's resolved with the cannon again it's just like 
I don't know. Don't... I feel like it should have been something a, something a little different. Yeah, it could just. It does look slightly different. Like it has a different, a slightly different design. But I just, I was like, I guess that's, a, I guess that's the thing. I, I guess that's and then what we, they're doing. Then we kind of get a little epilogue of the play going, and uh, her parents don't divorce, and you see her on stage with glasses. You're like, oh my god, she put her glasses on. Like they're just fakes. Yeah, hilarious for the play. I guess which is like a funny, like I guess subversion, whatever. <laughs> Who cares? But oh, we didn't really talk. There's one little subplot we didn't talk about. So his father was actually oh yeah, the magazine. Yeah, so he was a publisher for like uh, a sub like a subgenre magazine or something like that. Yeah, this was like years ago before he started Baker. He was a he was like a publisher, I guess a failed publisher, and now he's back into it. He's like inspired by <laughs> the situation, and he it seems to like he's made this kind of like I can't tell if it's like subversive or if it's just like raunchy. Uh, but one of the kids gets it and brings it to class, and the teacher reads it, and she fucking loses her fucking mind. She's also a crazy teacher, so. I love her, actually. Her car gets destroyed. <laughs> it does. And, and we see a little Kenny from South Park yes. keychain of, of Kenny dying, which is great. I uh, I love this teacher character so much. She's so wild, and I just love the way she moves. Uh, <laughs> and she has a she's, megaphone, too. She's a certified cutie. <laughs> she a baddie, as they would say uh, two baddie. years ago. She's baddie of the week. So, yeah, anything else you want to say about this episode, though? Uh, it was my favorite. I loved it. Um, I, I was very raunchy. The next one might be a little raunchier. It's... Uh, I think the next one has, like, the most overt, like, sexual yes, content. Def- definitely. Um, but the fact that like, she's, like, shoving her, her like, uh, crotch into Naoto's face to attack it's, is really funny. It's, yeah, it is definitely trying to. And tr- it's, you know, the him getting jealous is kind of like the big Oh, well, that's the next one. Though. Yeah, the next one. Yeah, this one is more like him confronting like sexuality, where like he's been uh, rejecting it so much from uh, Hari, Mimi, Mamimi, uh, Mamimi. Uh, ma- 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 oh my god, I forgot her name again. Uh, ma Mimi. <laughs> he he's been rejecting it from her, not even acknowledging it. He just kind of sh- sh- like shrugs it off. But with this, it's like literally in his face. Like he literally can't get it out of his face. Like <laughs> nothing her, at all. Her crotch is nothing in his at face. All. <laughs> nothing at all. Uh, so he has to can actually confront it uh, and save her and hang out with her because she's the best girl. <laughs> even though she is a twelve year old, just want to remind everyone at home. Pretty cool, huh? Said Jim. <laughs> so yeah, so this episode aired in August, like I said, and then next one aired in, like October. So again, a few months gap between them all. Halloween special to, to get to the baseball episode, the titular anime baseball episode. So, how do you feel about baseball episodes, Jim? Uh, we've had to talk about this before. I think they are fine. <laughs> Um, last one we've watched was Jujutsu Kaisen's baseball episode. Which was actually pretty good. Yes. It's funny that it's like a trope. Because baseball, when you can use your powers, is like way more interesting than just like it's baseball true. episode. It's true. Uh, I think it's it's interest. There's a lot of like metaphor that comes with baseball. And this one, it like directly goes for the sexual metaphor, I think. Yes, this one's heavily. Because like that's kind of the big joke is like the baseball metaphor. The whole like, oh, first base, second base, third base home. Yeah. Um, They don't really talk about that. It's kind of like subtext, I guess. But but yeah, Haruko yeah. is like a great baseball player. She just destroys everybody with her like, single-handedly. You can just play pitch her and, the, like, and hit her. Like. So what she's doing is she's literally like, like basically being a part-timer for every other team to just beat like the home team. <laughs> He's the grandfather coach team, which is funny Hill enough called them Abase uh, Martians. Okay, yeah, they kept. There's a lot of like jokes about that, like a, a like Olymp Olympus or whatever Olympic. I can't remember the exact, but and as we learned, Nal- Nalto does refuses to swing his bat. So yeah, that's the thing. Every time he's up a bat, he don't swing. Metaphor. He doesn't, he doesn't want to be compared to his brother also because he you know he's a ba- special baseball player. So like another thing, he, like, he doesn't want to play baseball. He doesn't want to be his brother. Which yeah, also, but he carries the bat around everywhere. He's okay for his brother, but yeah, doesn't want to be his brother. Also, can just be tied back to what I always thought of, like with him and Mamimi about like you know the the American girlfriend. Yeah, I think the the whole th- the reason why he carries the bat around the way I interpret that is like there's it's the kind of how like when you have I don't have this experience, but when been, you have an older sibling, you look up to him. Well, yeah, there's that, but there's also like you can't separate your identity from them. Yeah, like you're always going to be compared by like. Your family, your your community, your friends, like they're always going to compare you to your older sibling. Well, and if he's a successful foreign like athlete, then that's like a horrible I, thing. To I can say compare yourself to me and my older sibling. We 
we took very di- weird different paths and we're, <laughs> very different very cool different paths that's true you're you're also like... my, my own sister's a, a professional wrestler so <laughs> i can't really live up to that but i'm also a podcaster now so <laughs> it's weird yeah <laughs> two, two two different mediums that are looked down upon <laughs> by many people <laughs> we their names are said in hushed and hushed tones when, when mentioned um but no, yeah, so I think it's supposed to be kind of like he has to deal with the kind of stigma of people comparing him to his more successful brother. So why bother? Why swing if I'm just going to be compared to my brother who's yeah. better in every way? Every, like, every say, oh, you're not as good as your brother. Like, why would I? Like, yeah, why? why even try? So so yeah, they kind of go back to their house and that's when we kind of see like the dad massaging Haruhi with his chin. It's like saying I think Lupin would fucking do to some but some woman to seduce her, <laughs> massaging over this giant so, fucking chin. And so there's this repeating imagery of like the, uh, the, the outlet. Yeah, like yeah, the thing on the outside of your house that like tracks how much electricity that you go through. Yeah. Um, there's like a little like a meter indicator. Yeah, there's a meter. There's like a, a little indicator that that like flashes when electricity is being used, and he is uh Which if you don't know that it's like, probably growing up why well, I, I probably had no idea what that was <laughs> yeah, like right. i'm just saying this, this is just this is so symbolic of something yeah i definitely didn't learn about that until like at least maybe high school that's why they also show like a power outlet always near like him when he's like talking to him in the living room yeah. as well to try to like, get 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 the point across because even people teenagers maybe watching this like could just didn't know don't know what that is but so um Haruko, yeah she's getting a massage but she she even mentions like something about like oh yes an electric massager so they drop hints about it not yeah. being his actual dad but he just doesn't even behave like a human yeah he literally behaves like a like a appliance like yes he's, he just says like random shit and and like she's also just like she looks like very intensely trying to trigger nalta with like the spot like her reactions like she even like blushes it's very sexual. yes very sexual and now it's obviously jealous of which it. one thing i think is really weird so the part when she starts blushing this is such a dumb nitpick the shade the shade of pink that they use for the blush on her cheeks is not like complimentary of her skin tone mm-hmm. and it looks fake like they should have used like a much like redder i mean pink. it could be fake too she's maybe she's just doing a, a fake kind of like orgasm face well to, yeah i think it's it's probably supposed to be to, done to, to, to be honest the orgasm isn't real and she's faking the it. female orgasm is not real <laughs> it is a mess um, she goes pretty cool huh <laughs> no but it's that is such a dumb nitpick i don't know i just thought that pink was like way too bright pink it should have been like a darker but yeah this, this is the episode that really sets off like him having feelings for her yes and so that's kind of the whole thing is like this jealousy like yeah he's He's suddenly jealous, and so yeah, he's, of her. He storms off against, of, of his dad. Rather, yeah, he storms off to go run the bakery essentially, and we meet a red-haired man that wants to buy some food and kind of just like gives him a warning of wom- about women. <laughs> he's like, Don't, "Watch out for older women. Women fucking <laughs> suck." Yeah, this freaking men's rights activist walks into his bakery. He's like, "I have a pamphlet. I'm gonna show." Uh, which, which later to be na- you. be uh, commander. Amara, like Amara, Amara, I think. So this is like kind of weird. Like we kind of jump. Amaro. Mm-hmm. We kind of jump genres in this episode. Yeah. He's the commander of the Interstellar Immigration Department. So, okay. One thing that I'm like very, very worried about the sequels, like talking about this, like the thing that I really enjoy about Fully Cooley is it is so grounded. <laughs> and the fact that Haruko could or could not be an alien is great. And he knows her because he's. He does. He does. Yeah. So he like with this, they're explicitly bringing into it that she is an alien. That he there's like this secret organization, like sci-fi. It's basically it's making this not sci-fi series, or I would say like a light sci-fi series into like more of a sci-fi. Yeah. And like he's where well, that's not the reason why I like this show. Yeah. Like she's someone that he, he also interacted, so he could have been like like now, so he he could have been a victim of her at some point. It's very. It seems like the way he's talking about it sounds like he was used and abused by Haruko, and like he even states like he like she's now using him. Like, this boy now essentially and yeah but he goes back to his to the department we his uh, the girl who's like with the the, the dark skin She's like, like a garu yeah, basically like, lieutenant uh kitsuro bame who i love her design so much like i she's very similar to the uh the, in street fighter alpha the, the dolls who are the bison minions they all had that kind of like suit with a small tie kind of uh-huh. uniform and i love that like uh, i have no idea what you're talking about but sure it, it's 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 the best design for cami <laughs> don't oh. at me because cammy has that outfit in in this alpha series where she has like the very small tie like oh i think i kind of know what you're talking about whatever she, it's, a, it's a marvel 2 outfit 
it, oh it, is it okay but uh yeah <laughs> I, get to, I, I like to shove in fighting game stuff whenever i can so yeah they, so they learned like one of their satellites was damaged by one of haruko's baseball and is now like going to be crashing into Earth. oh eventually. okay i didn't realize that she was the reason why it got damaged She's, okay that's funny to probably bait Naoto into hitting I I'm so I'm so worried she's grooming about grooming <laughs> Yeah, I'm I'm oh she is. Okay, I'm really worried about how how this series are gonna go forward because I really don't want like the secret like you don't want him sci-fi to... characters to like keep reoccurring. Like this is like my are, least interesting they, part. They are characters. They have those two have names. So they, they... I have a feeling they will, but I really don't want them like. To me, that is, like, the least interesting part of Fully Cooley. Yeah. Like, I think the idea of, like, bringing them in for, like, one episode is totally cool. But, yeah, this whole thing, like, I really like, yeah, like, now that you're pointing it out to me, like, she she is setting this whole thing up. Yes. Like, she really is manipulating this kid, like, more so than even the way that, like, it comes across in the episode where she's grooming him to, like, take the shot, basically. Yeah. She's she's like even like manipulating the whole like the, the every situation even like the uh, the secret organization she always feels like she has some kind of part of everything. Yeah, it's funny though because she's like so inept. Because like it, she seems so like incapable of doing anything right. Because like there's yeah, there's a couple parts where it cuts around with like Tim talking to him like he, like like uh, there's also a part where you know he he sees her like at like a store and everything and like she he wasn't tra- she's like training him to hit for batting hit practice and then like, yeah that's the big thing is like. She she trains him so much, and then it's funny because he doesn't actually even go. So after he trains her all this time of how to bat, she he doesn't even like go to that game. He he totally ducks out. Yeah, he's also like at the house where he like sneak like sees like in the room of like him and the father doing something like kind of like it's a very Evangelion shot. I think I always I, yes, it was... it's ext- I got extremely like, ner- <laughs> it's very nerve esque. Like even the, the the uniforms that they're wearing, like I meant just like when he sees like the he peeks into his father's room and sees them. Oh, oh, I thought you were talking about like, it. Kind of goes into like that like. That the, the 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 Shinji shot of like the going to the head of like kind of goes, oh yeah that like sort of fish eye and, and it kind of it yeah. kind of like sets off a signal to like they know like Naoto is like like I guess, I guess like the source yeah or like or I guess the next groom 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 of, target the victim of her I guess as you would say <laughs> the next Discord groom victim but yeah so it basically oh yeah he ditches but he comes home and he, and he like he sees his father. We get a lot of images like him just her just having her his father's head and everything. And yeah, like, it's really it's really like confusing at first because we get glimpses of of like yeah the, there's like her, the father on the ground you think he's dead and the, there's a lot of imagery of like especially cutting to him to kind of like, an interrogation with yeah so with him with the commander yeah there's a little bit that's like out of uh what's it called out of chronological order yes like they, they... Then there's also like what we learn after like the conversation the, the good conversation that was after like the 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 robot talk yeah so yeah he basically he goes back home and basically hits his father with the baseball bat which kind of is, like the he pit. doesn't actually he hits the tv he hits the tv but he said he hits the tv but yeah he actually does though he he's he hits the which he's sl- like well what we you... see is he hits the he throws the baseball back like Bait bat to his side. He hits the TV. He doesn't it, actually. But hit also his, remember, the, the robot. He, he hit the vending machine in the very beginning, like the first like oh, anger yeah. thing. And they always reference it, like it's essentially a vending machine that like you know him just hitting machines. He doesn't hit like people. Yeah, I didn't realize that. That's a, that's a everybody didn't catch one. that. Yeah, but no. So and then yes, because like clearly, you're, and the way his father reacts, and like when his father approaches him, he's like acting like a fucking freak robot. Like he's not talking right. And then so this was like really shocking. He finds his father's corpse in like a death, like a death sta- uh, state. Yeah, he's literally <laughs> like, like decomposing. Was... There's like rotting uh, cockroaches water. all over. We need some water, some hot water. The roaches look weird. His father even says that he died. He say, he <laughs> literally says that he died for a time. So this was explained a little bit later, I think, by the 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 eyebrows guy, uh, where he says that um, not everyone can be like a host for. The energy. Yeah, like the, only the, the it only NO, works with certain people. The NO channel. So, and that's why she killed him. So Haruko killed his father. Yes. Uh and then made a <laughs> made a replicant of his body, essentially, <laughs> to use as, oh, we didn't even talk about the sex scene. Oh, um, that's what I said, the scene when he peeked into the room and, and saw Oh, are we talking about that? I thought I we were talking, talking about No, I was talking about yeah, I mean he peeked oh, into the room about... and it kinda goes like close up to him because the room's like red and everything. That is actually kind of there's kind of an Ava moment like that. That's, um, that's what I feel like that movie felt like Ava. Because, like, Misato's character in Ava is, she's like, her character's like sex. Like, that's basically the way she solves problems is sex. Because the, 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 she the has true sex. men say she's the best girl, right? 
<laughs> it's true. Yeah, true. True. Because like the other characters are like literally like middle I, uh, school. I always like, like I love her. <laughs> she's, my favorite, she's my favorite one out of like I don't know anything about you, but I love her design the most. No, Misato's great because she's literally just like a like twenty. I think she's supposed to be like a mid twenties. Like total disaster. She's an alcoholic. She's a slob, but she's able to like, get her life together to like do like incredible work every day, even though she's a horrible person at heart. But no, but there's a scene kind of similar to that where like they there is no they don't show sex happening, but Misato is having sex with someone and it shows like a fan. Um and you hear all their like the noises and they're talking, but Which is the other thing yeah. you can also hear in that part where you hear like them like, he's like talking to him like in the in the uh in the bakery, the commander, and you can hear like the noises like yeah. in the background of like her and her father. Um, and it makes sense. So it's I think the joke is supposed to be like so she's using her his father's like replicant body as like a massager, but then it's like, oh, is he supposed to be like a vibrator? Like is that like the joke? Like plug in he's like a plug he's in just, electronic sex he's toy. Just a, he's also just a toy to be used against now to Yeah. But yeah, also like cause also the interrogation goes afterwards about just like kinda just talking to him really about her and everything that's going on and basically says like just give her a message that like I need a favor to like just fix this mess. Yeah. And I not- like the way they talk about it too. It's very coded. It's like like I need the the big slugger to do one more <laughs> uh and it's just like it's I like that there's so much unspoken about their history. Like the way that like Haruko smiles eyebrows. when she thinks about eyebrows. Eyebrows. <laughs> <laughs> uh she like smiles like she has like fond memories of him, but he clearly has like pretty, disdain. Pretty yeah, tumultuous memories of her. She's just um, she's just trouble. We know Yeah, basically. And so, basically he tells Nauta like in the interrogation just like nothing good can come from her. Don't sleep with crazy. Don't, don't, don't take your dick don't take your dick and crazy don't take your bat and crazy <laughs> but it, so yeah she, she, she takes him up to uh also Tokyo uh, Tower. also my mommy just goes to the baseball game with her and she kind of sits on the robot and everything she doesn't do anything really in this episode other she than really like, does drop her panties with nalta the only thing she does is she goes to like where the satellite is gonna crash and like does a prayer to some like <laughs> well, god do you think this is gonna cancel school tomorrow <laughs> That's pretty funny. She's definitely... I didn't mention this last time I meant to. She's definitely like a Chunibio character. Like, she's Chuni. Like, okay. She, she she has like that sort of like, like ah, this the fire of death. Like, she's very disconnected. For being a high school... That's, I think, why the, the his classmates made fun of her in episode two is because she's like immature for her age. Yeah. Uh, whereas, for being a high schooler. Yeah. Even though she exerts all these like sexual like um acts basically or pseudo sexual acts to, on Naoto. Mm-hmm. she's like mentally fixated on like things that a ch- like a child would be like so i think that's really she's like a reverse version of nanami or n- n- yeah n- n- from jujutsu kaisen wait n- this, who is <laughs> who are you talking about who's the the it's pretty cool right girl <laughs> N- <laughs> nina mori nina mori nina mori yeah eerie yeah it's, she's like an inverse version of her where ah. yeah but yeah, this show's pretty pretty good actually. I, I like I like Fully Coley actually. Jim's like I got I got to watch all these fucking like millions of fucking lore video. they not even lore dissection videos. videos. Yeah. But uh, yeah, so they go to the the Mechanica plant, and that's when she extracts a Gibson Flying V guitar. So a fa- and then so yeah, and as you said, bat. she puts like the 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 uh, soap guard around his head. Yeah, and it's this is like really gory. Like is she it? she really like is ripping like flesh and like viscera out of his head. I also just feel like this is probably the inspiration for like the the Scott Pilgrim sword, the power of love and the power of self respect kind um, of thing of just like of extracting like a. Uh, I feel like that's kind of like that. That feels like it's more of like I don't know. Like it, that's been in like other things. It could have been, but it felt like very. Mer- mer- also comes uh, out of like his his uh well, yeah, chest, not his head. I, said, I know. I'm just saying that it could be in like a, like a. Like a idea or inspired by that maybe but it, i don't know but yeah she it pulls out the guitar and uses it as a bat so and leaves and leaves it to him also so there's a pretty funny gag that i really enjoyed that i'm confused by hmm. so there the whole joke is that like she's uh, shoving her hand deep into his head and, and pulling out this long red it's this long red string yeah and he, he's like He's like, ah, no, uh, don't touch me from behind. It's like very, like a lot of sexual. Then it cuts back to all the women in like the nerve commander room, and they all have like, bloody, like the they, remains they, of like a bloody nose I, explosion. I, I, I find it hilarious. They don't like, they don't acknowledge it. They just have it. Yes, I, find it I think it's it's very funny. They don't acknowledge it, but I'm confused. And then it cuts back to them with having the tissues just in their. Yes, <laughs> but I'm confused as to why this happened. Why? What about that encounter? Something big and long coming in, out of this twelve-year-old. 
caught them on something. But he's uh, the the part that the fact that he's twelve is gross. It makes it a little gross to me. <laughs> but also, it's just weird because I don't know. I'm just so confused by. I'm confused by they didn't and the guy or they did and the guy didn't. That's the that's the weirdest thing to me. But it's funny. It's a very funny visual gag. I it guess is. it's supposed to be that it was just like an arousing thing that happened. But, yeah. Uh, so they let them know this is a sexual thing. And the, the fact that they do plug it up uh, with like tissue is, is also very funny. They all have tissue in the next shot. So yeah, and then Naoto ha- is busy left to go. It the, the satellite turns into a glove that turns into a baseball. Which and, is really cool. And Naoto swings his bat. Also, the description of it goes to the, the story of the wiki has bat in quotes. Which I learned really <laughs> funny because it is a guitar. It, I is, guess. it is technically a guitar. So yeah, he holds the ball. He didn't st- hit it right away, but yeah, then Har- Haruko comes in there and swats it to fucking galaxies unknown. Yeah, but it's it's finally time for him to swing the bat, and he does. So also, he, he does his work, but he does still need some help. Also, still. she picked the building because it would ha- do the least amount of damage. And if we see what her attack does, and it like just shat, it just makes like a fucking like crater around the area. Okay, so yes, this is a. Uh... So I immediately uh, got a flashback to Daikon Four. I think I, I made you watch Daikon Four. I don't I don't remember. So that. before Gynax existed, the guys that made Gynax, uh, they would do this like fan convention called Daikon. So this was like in the in the mid eighties. Is, is there a ball pit? <laughs> I mean, oh, there was a ball pit. <laughs> no, basically, like when it was still kind of really underground to be an otaku, they had these really like intense like uh cons and the, the one is called daikon because like a daikon is like a radish that's like the joke um so daikon 3 they had like a big animation for and then daikon 4 they have this like incredible animation for it. i know i showed you and i probably showed friend. me then um because it's like basically just like a big love letter to all the things they're obsessed with and there's a whole scene where like so it's uh, this girl who's like a bunny girl outfit that's like the thing she rides like a big guitar there's like an uh electric light orchestra song playing uh, it's a crazy. It's like this five minute long animation. It's it's amazing. There's a part it, where like Darth Vader fights the girl. There's like a million references to like every like kaiju in every like kaiju film ever. I'll show it to you after this because it, it's it, so it's wonderful. It's inferior to the Sakura Khan commercial. It will never be the Sakura <laughs> Khan commercial. But uh, the reason why I'm mentioning it is there's a scene in it where because it's basically just a music video where this random shit's happening. But there's a scene where there's like a a huge explosion. It looks incredible. It's gorgeous. There's like the way that the camera pans around it is I can't believe that <laughs> indie animation guys just did this. They weren't being paid. They did this for fun. <laughs> and the explosion does that thing where like it goes out and then it comes back in. Like you see the trees come back in. And then at the very end of the scene, explosion it, porn. it does like the big, like big wide, like sudden circle. So what happens well, he he knocks it into space and there's a big ex- well she knocks it technically big explosion when it flies into space the sky had turned red and then immediately like pew and it goes all blue again or whatever like dark blue yeah and that is like totally another thing from the, the Daikon 4 video where the mm. the whole world like suddenly erupts in flowers and they yeah. do that that's like and image the apocalyptic, in every guy next. the apocalyptic sky gets shifted back to normal yeah it, it that's something that's like almost in like every big like Gynax work that's funny I I could have sworn this probably it's probably in uh, Grand Lagoon too. Probably yes. Probably so, especially when the it. when the big thing is it's like the sky is like kind of you know reaching the sky and everything and like I feel like that that show would have the sky shift colors. I want to rewatch Grand Lagoon so bad. There's a lot of like names <laughs> for little things that animators did, um, and they're often named after it. Like I'm sure you've heard of like I forget the guy's name. This is terrible, but the missile circus thing. Like, have you you've heard of that before, right? Like. His name's like a uh, Tetsan, a uh, uh, Tetsuo or something, whatever. But there's, it's like the thing in like old like eighties anime where there'd be like a million missiles just like all flying different oh, things. Oh yeah. So that was like a, a technique or like a, a style that was attributed to one guy that became a like a thing. Time. <laughs> um, but also like there's like the whole thing too. Another one I think of is like when an anime ends with a freeze frame and then it gets it becomes like a really detailed image. There's a name for that too. It's mm. named after the guy that started that. That was like a thing from like the sixties or seventies. Hmm. Whatever. But I wonder if there's names for these little gynaxisms. Because you know like the gynax pose, that's like a thing. Oh yeah, I know the gynax pose. The I pose. don't know if there is one in fully cool. Well, we have two episodes left to find out. <laughs> I would I would be surprised if there wasn't. Because even like Gunbuster, there's the the gynax we pose. We will find out. We have two episodes left. Gunbuster, the mech itself does the Gynax pose. It's great. I love it. Uh, but, but, yeah. but yeah, so that so the last, these episodes are really about women. Uh, a lot. Something about women. Something about women. 
by Buddy Harahi. It's about how women can be pure and wonderful and how women can be evil bastards. So we have two episodes left. Do you have any thoughts of where it could end or go? Like, I feel like we have to see more of Mamimi just because she has literally not been a character in the last two episodes. It's a fair bet, and she's the only one that's really recurring. And she's, like, in the first scene. Like, when you have a character that's, like, in the first scene and is so close to the main character, and he says, I, I feel like I need to be close to her, mm-hmm. I feel like it needs to be... We need to have a, a finale with her, really. And where, Even and though she's my least favorite character. And where do you feel the, Har- the Haruka stuff? I think that she's just gonna, like... I think she's ultimately gonna be a good guy. Um, we're going to end up coming out of the show liking her, even though she is horrible and terrible. But she's just going to fuck off. I think she's just going to leave. Well, do you think Naoto will... Get a boner? Will say he loves somebody? <laughs> Strange, <laughs> very we're, leading question. For a man that has so many romantic interests in this show, will he like say say he likes somebody? Um, he might say I like you. He might say Daisuki. Oh, no, he might not say Dai. He might. He, will he love? He will will say he say Steve. the L word? And I'm not saying lesbians. <laughs> no, uh, I don't know. I guess we'll see. I I wouldn't. I don't think so. I don't think he's mature enough for that, really. And. Uh, do you think something else will come out of his head or will it be like a like an airy situation of he's gonna fight somebody's like other head creature hmm because yeah we didn't really get that in the last one it was more his head was used we, we as didn't like a get tracker. any head yeah we didn't get any head monster we got a space monster or a space not even a space satellite yeah it just still was like connected to his head that like they still were able to like yeah they used something of his head but it wasn't like a like a robot coming through yeah i don't know i think i got i guess we got to have like a big finale right there's got to be like a big mech yeah we have two episodes left I'm assuming he'll have an epic transformation scene epic transformation. where he, he he goes back into uh, Wait, uh that, that transport to an even bigger artillery gun. <laughs> Maybe <laughs> his big brain will shoot a big his missile. Big dick br- artillery gun. He's gonna <laughs> shoot his load again yeah. at a robots. <laughs> big but, dick artillery. But yeah, we're two episodes left to of uh, this. I'm really enjoying Fully Cooly. I'm, I'm glad. I'm, I'm glad you don't end up hating to crush my soul like. Through this. I just needed to get to episode three. Episode three was like fucking awesome. I love that episode so much. I said that's probably like my, the episode I've I've watched the most. So it's pretty good, right? Like, I mean, that's just how I feel. And I said this like episode three I've seen the most, and episode four is what I've seen the least about like about the time. That's really funny. And they're very drastically different episodes. Where like there's, there's a lot there's a lot like more dialogue talking in 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 four. Yeah, four four really did have like the Ava feel to it in a lot of ways. Yeah, uh, like basically Nerve just exists, uh, the command center people. <laughs> um, yeah, but the, episode three, the, the MIB, the MIB, yeah, Men in Black. <laughs> but episode three had the best scene ever. It had the, the part I, where she says, right? oh "I mean, God. what can what can, what else can we say?" <laughs> right? It's just the yo. Best. When you stream, you can just have uh, uh, you can make. I'll make that my uh, Notific- the, yeah, notification sound. <laughs> and then we had it ends with the eyebrow falling off finally. Yeah, the funny uh, seaweed eyebrow. I wonder if that was a translated a, a translation joke too, or a joke that was lost in translation. Maybe because uh, maybe that's like a portmanteau of like the word for combo and eyebrow. Yeah, it, it basically said like the references. The references don't really matter in, in translation. All you gotta get is like you know. But Sam, I need to have the most pure version <laughs> of the text. Purest version of my test. Yeah, sure. Uh, but yeah, there's there's definitely a lot of references. I'm sure there's a million fucking references that I'm not getting. Damn, we talked about this. I think I'm surprised it was this long episode. Wow, the first one was about this long. I know, but still, I didn't feel like, I didn't feel like we spent like an hour talking. It's because it's fun. It's, it's fun great. to talk about good anime. It is. This is one of my favorites. I'm glad we get to do it. It is really good. Um, I said, I'm super surprised this won the poll. Honestly, I thought Dragon Ball and Naruto would win. Even I know in Gundam was my other other option on there. By Thank the God, way. Naruto didn't win. <laughs> I, I we have the ocean cut now. We can use the ocean cut to make you watch. Your... <laughs> we legitimately can't use the ocean cut. Um, <laughs> but that, that's a later Sam pick. But yeah. So other than that, anything else we want to talk about? Should, I, should we? Um... I'm looking up spoilers by accident. Don't do that. Um, I was I wanted to see if if there was like a joke are, that I was missing with we, that guy's name. But are we plugging up those uh cat ears? Uh yeah no plug up the the bloody the bloody nostrils of every bloody. woman at nerve <laughs> every nerve HQ every sweaty woman every sweaty bloody nostril woman uh, okay thank you so much <laughs> for listening. that was really gross <laughs> thank you for this is why I did the I did the plug ups in Tech of Titan <laughs> thank you all so much for listening to this um again you can like 
comment, subscribe. All your thoughts, Jim. I know you're, Jim looking at the face of regret, and Jim is really <laughs> no, funny. I thought of an even worse one that we never use for Attack on Titan. <laughs> I'll, I'll tell it to you off the air. Can't be worse than uh, like Joe Skaskaska. I like Joe Skaskaska. Actually, <laughs> it really rolls all the time. Uh, <laughs> I love it. Again, you uh, you can follow the podcast on Twitter or me and Jim separately. We talked about stream stuff. Maybe one of us won't corporate. Pretty cool, huh? <laughs> In the in the one of these <laughs> notifications, uh, you also joined the Discord to talk about various other things of anime and manga. And with that, you I guess that's it. We'll see you in the the finale of Fully Cooly. We'll watch episode five and six, and then we'll move on to the other genres. Coming to you next Fully Cooly Friday. Fully Cooly Friday on a, on a very skank into Fully Cooly Friday. Sk- what skanking? Yeah, the ter- it's ska. Oh, skank. Okay. It's ska. Skank in the fully cooly Friday. Skanking is the ska dance. I hate ska. Did you know ska came before reggae? Really? <laughs> Re- reggae came after ska. Yeah. Really? Is that true? <laughs> yes. It's a very, it's a very popular joke. It is true. I guess that ska makes sense. Did become reggae. But ska sucks, and I hate it. I, I respect <laughs> reggae more than ska. <laughs> ska is a butt of many jokes. If I could like throttle ska, I would. <laughs> It's, it's, it's the most throttleable music. <laughs> I, I watch many of you just, just entirely just shitting on Ska, but yeah. yes. The joke is Ska came for reggae, no one caring. That's really funny. That is a joke. But yeah. Damn, I hate Ska. <laughs> I fucking hate Ska. Jim doesn't. Jim hates real big fish. Ska is like, it's like <laughs> you hit a point in Ska where everything sounds the fucking same. <laughs> it's just like they, they have like a default like state for their music. It's, it has to have that like, that offbeat like, uh, that's clean a, guitar chord and then like an occasional burr, 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 that's, burr. that's why you gotta you can skank to literally any ska song because it doesn't really change because your brain needs to have at least one brain cell to, to <laughs> understand ska music with your checkerboard shoes hey i wear those actually your shorts i do also wear shorts and your hawaiian shirt over your t-shirt all right i don't wear that but <laughs> You're dangerously and close you to... too can be a member of a ska band <laughs> you have to have a, a funny hat though and skank in the mosh pit <laughs> Skank pit. Skank pit. <laughs> All right, we need to end this. <laughs> In the comments, put your favorite thing about ska. <laughs> no, don't. Your favorite do ska trivia about ska coming for reggae. <laughs> All right. And with that, goodbye. We will see you next Friday. See you next fully coolly ska day. Ska day. Every day is ska day. Bye. Bye bye. <laughs>